time and the technosphere, the law of time in human affairs, Jose Arguelles, page 18. Okay. Page 18. Preliminary definitions, biosphere, technosphere, nunosphere, as an evolutionary continuum. Con Continuum, Kintanum, Kintanan, Num, Kintanum. Okay. By, by understanding the inevitable event was a function, by understanding that the inevitable event was a function of the biosphere. Indeed, a necessary moment in the evolutionary trajectory of the biosphere, we are saying that this event was not just a human enactment, but that humans, inseparable from the biosphere, are affected to form functions that relate to the process of the biosphere as a whole. Seeing the inevitable event and, in fact, the entire human drama from the perspective of the biosphere, we are actually lifting the cruel trajectories of contemporary reality above conflict and into a state where genuine laws of peace and harmony may shed their lights, light of wisdom, illuminating the human drama with a higher understanding. One thing is certain. Unless we rise above our own humanity and cultivate a non-anthropocentric -anthrop view, the view represented by the nunosphere, where oh, nunosphere, there would be no release from the calamity that is now engulfing us. The point is not of maintaining the global economy, but of saving the biosphere. For the multi-layered task of bringing new understanding to light, defining the technosphere, and then the laws of law of time, we shall define. We shall begin with the former, defining the technosphere in the context of the evolutionary continuum, continuum of biosphere, technosphere, nunosphere. Ver, Vernatsky and the understanding of the biosphere. It is amazing that the name uh, V. I. Verdansky, 1863 to 1945, is so little known in the West, and that the word biosphere, as well as the laws of principles pertaining to it, are scarcely more known. To a large degree, the ignorance is due to the great cleavage in human relations relations experienced as the cold war the biosphere which was profoundly studied and scientifically articulated by the master russian scientist v i Vern vernatsky is actually the precise word for what in the west is vaguely referred to as the environment but even more than being a per precise and scientific description for what is meant by the use of the word environment, biosphere defines a whole system model of life on Earth, and because of that, also proposes a whole system mytho mytholo mythology and point of view. You cannot speak about the biosphere without... Uh, entering into a world of discourse that is holistic and holo holonomic to the core. If one looks for uh, Verdansky's work in English, one will find per, uh, precious little available. His key work, The Biosphere, exists in two very different translations. The one published by Synergic Press in 1986 is easier to read, while the other, the complete an annotated edition published by the Far West Institute in 1998, is far more uh, erudite, with a major bi um, bibliography and much supplementary information. The earlier translation was published in conjunction conjunction with the opening of the Biosphere 2 project outside Tuscan, 
Arizona. It is now a tourist site with a book bookstore that carries nothing but Ver, Verdansky, Verdansky, several other hard to find English language books on the biosphere include the uh, excellently informative traces of bygone biospheres by Andre Lapo, Synergetic Press and Mirror Publisher Publishers, 1987. The flash, the flashy biosphere catalog. Synergetic Press, 1985, and the much more specialized Energies and Illust Illustrated Guide to the Biosphere and Civilization by Vaklak Smil, MIT, 1999. Of these books, only traces of bygone biosphere, biospheres contain significant information about ver Vern Dansky and his ideas. This scant list of available text in English is hardly proportionate to the vast reality of the biosphere as a complex ter terrestrial dynamic in the throes of evolutionary change. The place and role of Vernalsky in Russian science is virtually equal to that of Einstein in Western science. In consideration of the achievements of each of these scientists also presents us with a dynamic contrast in perspectives, areas of interest, and consequent modes of analysis. The physicists, uh, the phys physicalist uh, relativism of Einstein's legacy and his pursuit of the Big Bang is radically different in almost every way from the legacy of Verdansky's work, which presents a biological overview that is or uh, organically inter in intergative, and the basis of what is in what in Russian science has come to be called uh, cos uh, cosmosm, cosmosm. While the physicist uh, fascination of Western science has supported the materialism of Western, of modern Western thought and its way of life, which is actually an accelerating function of the biosphere's own internal process. The whole system thinking of Verdinsky, characterized by the conception of a biogeochemical process, ironically support supports. A cosmic rather than materialistic world view to illustrate the russian perspective and the influence of verzinski's work we present the concluding thoughts of a book by another russian scientist and philosopher i laptev okay and this is a quote from i laptev each one of us requires the whole earth today this is quite clear but surely each one of us is required by the whole earth. And when these two mutu uh, mutu mutu mutually penetrating requirements so distinctly revealed and intensified by the leap out into space are satisfied, the new historical epoch will begin, quote, in which mankind itself and with mankind all branches of its activity will experience an advance that will put everything preceding preceding it in the deepest shade end quote f uh, angles dialectics of nature and people no longer burdened by the thrift thirst for money will remember something that many many of our contemporaries have forgotten the only important thing in life are such intangible quanti qualities as beauty and wisdom, laughter and love. Nothing remains for us, members of a society that ideals of which are in unison with elemental geological processes and the laws of nature, but to wish, but to wish that people the world over will recognize this as soon as possible. Okay. 
okay L- let me continue reading this a l- one more one more paragraph a couple more paragraphs okay laptev's words and then we'll go back to argoelis okay laptev's words written 28 years ago and precisely at the midpoint between hiroshima and the inevitable event and the inevitable event that he's talking about is 9 11 okay that he keeps on referring to that it was preordained to a certain degree right inevitable inevitable event as well as during the year in which the world trade center in new york city was finally completed and Iraq inaugurated April 4th, 1973, simply and elegantly state the theme and point of view that we are pursuing. In fact, it is the inevitable event that prepares us for the new historical epoch. But first, we must realize how we are organized by the biosphere in order that the technosphere may be transformed into the nunosphere. Okay. The root of Laptev's cosmic visions lies in Verdinsky's successant definition of the biosphere. Quote, the biosphere is the region of Earth for the transformation of cosmic energies. End quote. Although the word biosphere had been coined in the late 19th century, it was really only with Verdinsky's efforts that the biosphere became a viable description of the totality of life on Earth, inclusive of its organic and inorganic support processes. Verdensky was trained as a geologist with a specialization in crystallography. He immediately absorbed the implications of Curry's discovery of radioactivity 1896 and devoted many studies to the purpose of uranium and naturally occurring radioactivity within the earth's geology by the time of the first world war verdinsky had already written important texts such as such as fundamentals of crystallography and descriptive mineralogy and along with madame curie proposed an international uh, radiography of earth's crust this was an advance of adolf wegner's definition uh, definitive work on plate tectonics during the time of the first world war and russian revolution verdinsky's attention turned towards the problem of living matter and its relation to the geochemistry of the earth from this was born verdinsky's perception of the intuitive biochemical process by which the biosphere maintains itself in 1923 he published a plea for the establishment of a biogeochemical laboratory in paris verzinski worked at the institute do radium madame curie and became acquainted with henry bergson who was then president of the International Commission of Intellectual Co- Cooperation and the League of, of the League of Nations. Through Bergson's circles, Virginsky met often with the biologist Pierre uh, Teilhard de Chardin, 1881 to 1955, and the philosopher Edward Leroy, 1870 to 1954 with whom Virginsky jointly coined the word and concept of the nunosphere. Although Pierre uh, Telhard de Chardin is credited in the West with the concept of the nunosphere, defined by him as the, quote, mental, in- mental envelope of the planet above and continuous with the biosphere, end quote, the Chardin's approach to the evolution of the nunosphere as a natural consequence of uh, vertebrate biology differs from Rudzinski's understanding in which it is the entirety of the biosphere that evokes the nunosphere. 